You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Tuesday, the 23rd of May, 2017. We see that the markets for stocks are up for the day with the S&P 500. The QQQ, that is the NASDAQ 100, is up also even stronger, 0.86% versus 0.51% for the S&P 500. We see that bonds are down just a little bit, about 0.27%, and gold is up. 0.42%. Now let's jump into these weekly charts, see what's going on with the S&P 500. We see that up for the beginning of the week, we see the derivative oscillators continuing to lose its downward momentum. We are still on the weekly chart in a confirmed down move as far as the weekly chart goes, having crossed over going down back on 3.31.17. That was on, of course, that Friday Market went down for a while for the last three weeks prior to the closing of the immediate past week. We had up movement. Then we had a lot of indecision. And again, just the first day on Monday, we're up just half a percent. But we do see a green upward moving candle. Still, though, still we are in a confirmed down move. Derivative oscillator may be getting close to crossing over on that weekly chart. Hasn't done so yet. Okay, we kept thinking for the three weeks ending the 28th of April, the 5th of May, and the 12th of May that the market was going to move up. And then, of course, we had that flash crash last Wednesday, gave us a lot of indecision in the marketplace. And as we look at that two-day chart, we actually had a crossover going down on that two-day chart and still Not enough energy to cross back over going up, so keep your eye on the prize. We don't have a trade on there just yet. We will continue to see just what is going on with this up move that is troubling us. If you look at the indicators, though, still negative, and the derivative oscillator continued to gain downward momentum. So pay attention to what is going on. Remember our four-hour chart? Well, it has pulled back, and of course, if it does rotate back over going down, that would be your opportunity to jump in. Hasn't happened yet. We shall wait and see. That is our traditional way of getting into trade. So we shall watch. Maybe all that downward momentum's not gone yet. Keep your eye on things. Now let's keep moving ahead. We're going to go to the Qs up 0.86%. It was at the most of all of the ETFs that we look at on the weekly chart. We had that weekly vertical crossover in the week ending Friday the 28th of April. And we had, again, three weeks. This last week was a red open box candle with a larger wick on top. So, again, still uh, moving to the upside. Still, that's what it is. Uh, That's what it defaults to. Now, we're still in a confirmed up move, although we have broken that weekly trend line. There's no way with our existing green candles in the past to redraw that weekly trend line. We are above it with the movement that closed throughout the course of the day, but actually opened below it. We continue to see the derivative oscillator gaining energy and, of course, the PPO is still up. So we're in a confirmed up move on that. Now let's drill in a little deeper. What are we doing on our two-day chart? Two-day chart, still in a confirmed up move, barely bouncing off, it appears, just bouncing off the red signal line. That's not a lot of strong up movement, but we'll continue to watch. Now if we delve a little deeper into that four-hour chart, what do we see going on? Well, it has not crossed over yet. But it may do that, and of course the pullback has been underway. If we do see that four-hour chart crossover, you can look to our traditional way of trading and jumping in at that point and riding that trend. Now it hasn't done that yet, but we do have the weekly in a confirmed... Let's go back to our weekly chart here. Our weekly chart is a confirmed up move and the two-day, and if that four-hour crosses back over and heads up, then, of course, on our traditional way of doing things, that would be your jumping in point. So let's continue to watch the cues, see what happens. That crash during Wednesday of the past week is what sort of knocked everything off kilter, but we'll see just how much longer these markets will go up. 
With that up movement in the market today, what did we see in the stock market in both the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500? What did we see happen consequently with bonds? Well, bonds were down 0.27% for the day. Now we see our weekly chart, and again, our Heiken Ashi candlestick show the average pace increasing. Derivative oscillator lost a little bit of energy. The PPOs continued to go up. We're in a confirmed up move, of course, on our weekly chart, and we are in a confirmed up move on that two-day chart. As we hone into that, we had that crossover going up on the two-day chart ending on Friday. What do we see going on on that four-hour chart? Well, of course, it is continuing to move up. The backup has not occurred yet. If indeed that backup crossover going down occurs and then you have that momentum changing to go up, that of course would be our traditional way of jumping into that up move and riding it up if indeed we see that happen over the course of the week. So keep your eye on TLT also for a potential up move along of course with the cues. Now, Lastly, we're going to go to gold. What do we see going on on gold? Well, gold is up 0.42%. It's bouncing off that red signal line as far as the weekly chart goes. We kept thinking for the last two weeks, did we not? We were going to have a crossover going down. We thought it was going to happen and came very close to looking like that was going to occur. But for the stocks going down midweek last week, and we didn't make that crossover on the 19th, we also thought that crossover was going to occur the week before on the 12th of May. Didn't happen then either. We're in a confirmed up move on the weekly chart. And when we hone into that two-day chart, where is it? Hasn't crossed over going up yet. Might be coming if indeed that happens. Again, watch for a jumping in point potentially in gold. But let's zoom in to that four-hour chart so prescient. Did you jump in if you're a gold bug? Did you hop into it back on the afternoon of the 11th? Has it not done you well? We looked and thought as it was meandering along sideways that it may be getting ready to move down, but of course it popped right up. Derivative oscillators continuing to lose energy, but your PPO, the price percent oscillators, continuing to move up, so just keep an eye. Be aware that as far as the high went, gold closed at the high, that it made back on the 17th. So again, let's see how much more room gold has to actually accelerate up on this four-hour chart. Folks, that's where we are as we end the day on Monday the 22nd and go into Tuesday the 23rd as the beautiful month of May ends up slowly drawing to a close. Don't forget the time of year that we're headed into selling May and go away. Live to trade another day. We're going to be hitting the summer doldrums soon enough. What's the difference between that and the, and the fall winter trading zone? Well, did you notice all the great profits that we had as the market surged and kept moving in clean directions? Well, it does that in the fall winter trading zone. Typically, Things get a little herky-jerky as a lot of the volume leaves the market in the summertime. So we'll do the best that we can reading these charts over the course of the summer. You never know just what's going to happen. That's why we trend follow, and we want to find good weekly trends that we can jump into and ride. You want to know more about what we do? Go to our website, chartingwealth.com. Sign up for our daily video that we will be more than happy to send you. Just go to the website, put in your first name and your email address, and you will start receiving them. Along with that, you'll get an email that contains links to our How to Read a Stock Chart video, the layout that we use at freestockcharts.com. And in addition to that, you'll also get our trade worksheet, our daily market worksheet, and our weekly market worksheet. These are things that will supercharge your training to learn to read these charts, to follow the market, and to do practice trades. And if you're not doing practice trades, you're wasting a lot of your time and energy. We only ask for it to spend 10 minutes a day with us, but to spend it every single day the market is open. If you want to become a charting master and potentially make lots and lots of money from the skill set you gain in the market, you have to practice. And don't practice with real money. We're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We want you to practice until you get good Learn all the things you can learn, and then, and only then, when you are able to make consistent, sustained, accurate practice trades, then you can make up your own mind to spend your money as you see fit. 
God bless my friends. We love to hear from you. Write us cw at chartingwealth.com. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. All the best from chartingwealth.com.